Praise the eternal wise Yah and Shalom. Our brains have been tricked into seeing an image when we think of the Garden of Eden. We see Adam and Eve in a garden, hugged up, holding an apple. Sometimes the apple might even got a little worm or snake going around it. I titled this message, Stop That Foolish Talk About an Apple. We going to find out what really went down in the Garden of Eden. Follow me as we travel through the scripture and receive understanding from our Abba Yah. Before we get into the meat of this video, we don't want to assume that everyone knows what happened before Adam and Eve even were created. So let's go through a brief summary of Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, we learn that on the first day, Yah separated light from darkness. He called light day and darkness night. On the second day, he made the firmament, or heaven, or Shamayim. He also divided it from the waters above and the waters below. On the third day, Yah separated the dry land, which he called earth, from the waters, which he called seas. He also spoke grass, herb yielding seeds after its kind, and trees bearing fruit after its kind into existence. Then on the fourth day, Yah Elohim created the sun, moon, and stars to rule the day and night. He also created them to be signs and for seasons or festivals and for days and years. On the fifth day, Yah created water creatures or winged fowls, the birds of the air. And on the sixth day, he created the land creatures. And he also created male and female in his image. He commanded them to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. He also gave them dominion over every living thing. Chapter 2 goes into more detail about the events that occurred in chapter 1. We read what happened on the seventh day of creation. Yah ended his work, which he had made, and rested on the seventh day. Yah blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, or he set it apart. So from day 1 to day 6, Yah worked. He spoke things and they were. But on the seventh day, he rested from all of his work. And when we read in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, he instructs Moshe to command the children of Israel to remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. It's sanctified. It's supposed to be set apart. It's a day that we rest, where we fellowship with our Abba Yah, where we commune with him. It's a day from sun up to sundown that we dedicate to him. I'm sorry, I get excited talking about the Sabbath because I love his Shabbat, his day of rest. I love, hallelujah, that he has given us that day that we can rest from our labor all day long, our shopping, our working, our laundry, or all of the things that we do to keep our days going. But the seventh day is sanctified and set apart to Yah. So that's my spiel about the Sabbath. That'll be a whole nother uh, a video that we'll put up concerning the Sabbath. So let's move on further in with this Garden of Eden experience. Chapter two gives us again more detail. I want to do a side by side comparison that we may see and read for ourselves. That chapter two don't talk about a whole nother different experience. It just gives us more detail of chapter one. So in verse 11, and Yah said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his kind. And Yah saw that it was good. Chapter two again gives us more detail. Verse five. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For Yah Elohim had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. So here we're just seeing the details again. When Yah spoke, they were. Okay, so chapter 2 is telling us that 
uh, Yah didn't create someone to till the ground, to turn the dirt over, to do all of those different things. So he created man, which we'll read a little further. Again, side by side comparison, verse 26. And Yah said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So Yah created man in his own image and the image of Yah created he him, male and female created he them. And Yah blessed them and Yah said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Push pause and let's jump back up to verse 26 where it reads, let us make man in our own image. That will be a whole nother video all by itself talking about the oneness of Yah. He is Yah the Father. He was Yah the, uh, Yahshua the Son his word wrapped in flesh, and he is the Ruach, he is the spirit, he is the breath. Hallelujah. So that'll be a whole nother video that you can stay tuned for. So chapter two gives us more further detail. Verse seven, and Yah Elohim formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils at the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So we see how Yah formed man. Verse 18, and Yah Elohim said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. So now we see why Yah created female. Verse 21, and Yah Elohim caused the deep sleep to fall upon Adam and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh thereof. And the rib, was Yah Elo and the rib which Yah Elohim had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Yah said, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. As we finish up with the final verse of chapter one, this is where we get the meat of this video from. Verse 29 reads, And Yah said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me. So here Yah is instructing them that every tree of the earth they can eat of is bearing fruit, is for them to eat. It shall be meat for you. It's food for them. Again, chapter two gives us a little more detail. And Yah Elohim commanded the man saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So what is this tree? What is so special about this tree of the knowledge of good and evil? What is so significant about it that it is being pointed out, singled out? Well, one thing for sure is that this tree has nothing to do with things that are edible. Because again, they were already told of every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you, it shall be for meat. You can eat it. Yah created it for them that they may eat thereof. So again, we must recognize that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil had nothing to do with produce, had nothing to do with something edible that they would fill their belly with. So we must read further along to understand what was of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil that they were not supposed to eat of. And if they did, that they would surely die. Let's read further. Chapter three, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which Yah Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath Elohim said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So I highlighted now the serpent because our English language learning brains 
when we hear the word serpent, automatically think of something that looks like this image, a slithering snake, snake something that slithers on the ground, something that's, that, that's slimy, a serpent. Our minds automatically think that. But we have to understand that this book was written in Hebrew. It was written in Hebrew by a Hebrew man. It was given by the Elohim of the Hebrews. So we have to understand that when we read these words, we have to read from the from the uh, uh, understanding of Hebrew, what it meant. So we highlighted it that we may go through and break down this verse, chapter 3, verse 1 of Genesis. So we can get the full understanding of what Yah Elohim was telling them not to touch. I like to use the blueletterbible.org, this website. It's a really good website. It's a good resource to use when you're studying because it gives you, you can enter a keyword or, or um, a phrase, a Bible verse, um, and it gives you the transliteration it gives you what the Hebrew word was and what it was transliterated into, into um, the English language. So here we see now the serpent. I entered Genesis chapter three, verse one, and I clicked on now the serpent. And then it gives you the Strong's Concordance, H5175. And then it gives you the Hebrew word, Nahas. Now, please forgive me if I pronounce these the Hebrew words wrong. It is something that I desire to learn Hebrew. My original language is part of my heritage. So excuse me if I mispronounce some of these words as I'm learning how to um, pronounce them correctly. Again, now the serpent, we see it right here. Strong's H175. When you click on that, it brings you to another screen and it begins to break down the, these different words. And so here we see the transliteration, Nahas, they give you the pronunciation. I may be saying it uh, incorrectly, but y'all bear with me. It also gives you the root word, okay, where this word was broken down from. <clears throat> it breaks it down even further. So H5175, you see right here, was transliterated into the word serpent. So when we read further, it's further broken down H5172. H5172. Enchantment, divine, enchanter. It breaks it down even more. It begins to give you the definitions to practice divination. Down here, Nahash. Again, I could be pronouncing it incorrectly. Forgive me. Okay, it means to hiss or whisper. Hiss, whisper. That's where they get the serpent from. Okay, it means to whisper. He was an enchanter. He was a diviner. Okay, the Bible says he was subtle. And so that's where the word serpent comes from. So when we read, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, we have to understand that serpent that came from, the, from uh, his character, his, he was a whisperer, he was subtle. And then when we break down the word beast, we'll see H2416. Okay, ha, that word beast, it means to live, alive, okay, something that's alive. So beast does not always mean an animal or, or of some form of animal, but it can mean green vegetation, okay, plants are alive, flowing water, you see the life of the water as it flows, it moves, okay, man, we are alive, we are active. So beast just means lie, a lie, something that has life. And when we read in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13 through 15, we understand that this beast that Genesis 3 is referring to had a look about him. He was alive. And so we read, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of Yah, 
every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the gar carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of Yah. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. So this is what the anointed cherub looked like. He was covered in beautiful stones. He was purposely created that way. He was a beautiful being, a beautiful beast. He was alive. He was beautiful in, 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 in his works, the way Yah created him. He was perfect in his ways until iniquity was found in him. So again, <clears throat> just to close and summarize on this serpent, it did not refer to his appearance, rather his character. Okay, so when we hear of serpent, we have to get that image of a snake out of our brain, but rather understand that he was a diviner, an enchanter, a whispered, whisperer, a prognosticator. He was subtle. He came in and he spoke with, with, a uh, uh, deception. So serpent referred to his character, not his appearance. For we know that his appearance, according to Ezekiel, was beautiful. Genesis chapter three goes on, and we read in verse number two. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Eve or Chawa, her Hebrew name, she knew that that they could eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden. They were commanded, they began doing it. And verse three reads, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So there was something different about the fruit of this tree that was in the midst of the garden, that they were not supposed to even touch it. For if they did, they would surely die. And so I highlighted, but of the fruit that we may go to the blue letter, blue letter Bible.org and gain understanding of what that meant, what the Hebrew word was and what it meant. So here we see, but of the fruit, H6529. And this is the Hebrew word. And let's go on a little further. H6529 have been broken down as fruit, fruitful, fowls, first fruits, reward. Okay, and then we see the biblical definitions in this area. We know that it means fruit, literally, produce of the ground. But we recognize that this tree had nothing to do with produce that grew from the ground because Yah already gave them the instruction that they could eat all of it. This word fruit. The Hebrew word here that was transliterated into fruit also meant offspring, children, okay, the fruit of the womb. It also meant the fruit of your actions. Your actions are fruitful. They produce different things. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, let's break that down of the tree. Here we are of the tree, H6086. Let's see what that's broken down into. H6086, tree, stick, timber, wood, branches. Okay, we also see here a root that this word gets broken down even further. H695. H6905 means to shut, to make firm. And it gives the example like when you close your eyes real tight, you're making, making it firm. Your eyes are firmly shut. That's what that word came from, to make firm. Okay, to shut, especially the eyes. 
Okay, make something hard, make it firm. It gives you uh, the Hebrew wood, bone, backbone. Those are things that are firm. Okay, and so that's where the word tree came from. A Hebrew word that meant something that's shut, that's firm, is solid. Okay, so we know that the fruit didn't have anything to do with eating naturally, feeding, feeding themselves naturally. Okay, we all we rec we recognize that fruit meant uh can mean something from the womb or your actions. We recognize that tree, that word came from something that's firm, like bone. That's that's strong. Okay, now let's read what in the midst is broken down into. Here we are in the midst. H8432. Tavek. Forgive me if that's pronounced incorrectly. So here we are. It means midst, among, within, middle, between. Okay. Again, here's some more definitions of what in the midst mean. Okay. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden. Now we got to break down what is the garden. What is this portion of scripture referring to? So here we are of the garden. H1588 gone. Gone. Okay, they broken it down. Garden. It's an enclosure. Enclosed garden. Okay, figuratively of a bride. Okay, it's talking about a, a woman, a bride. She's a garden. She has an enclosed garden. Okay, and also of plants. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim have said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. We already know that the word they have, they were given, they could eat of every tree. We know that to eat means to take something that's on the outside of us and place it on the inside. We can't eat food unless we take it from off the, off the plate, which is outside of our body and place it into our mouth therefore making it enter into our body and then it's food for us. It becomes nourishment for us. So we already know that this tree has nothing to do with produce, with natural food. They were already commanded that they could eat of every tree that bore fruit. It was meat to them, okay? So neither shall ye touch it lest ye die. Let's see what that is. Here we are, shall ye touch H. Five zero six zero Naha H five zero six zero is broken down into touch, came, reach, bring near, okay, to extend, reach, okay. All of these are broken down into this word, uh, from this word touch, okay, properly to touch or lay the hand upon for any purpose, euphemistically to lie with a woman. Okay, so here we see this word touch not only means to take your hand and physically place it on something to touch, but it also meant to lie with a woman. So here we see a breakdown of Genesis chapter three, verse three. But of the fruit, we recognize that the Hebrew word also not only meant fruit that you can eat, but dealing with offspring. Okay, it has to do with the fruit of the womb. We recognize that tree of the tree. Okay, the word tree came from to make fern, wood, bone. Okay, which is in the midst of, we understand, middle, between, or into. We recognize that the word garden not only meant a place that had plants and flowers and trees, but it was the figure of a bride. And we can read even in the book of Solomon about a woman and how she was described. Elohim have said, ye shall not eat of it. 
Eat, we recognize that is to take something on the outside and place on the inside. Just like we have a plate of food before us. We don't eat it until we pick it up, take it from the outside of our body and put it on the inside. That's what we do when we read the word of Yah. We eat all of it. We read it with our natural eyes and the word, it enters our spirit, man. It comes from the outside off of the pages of the book and enters into us on the inside. And we hide that word in our heart that we might not sin against thee. And we recognize that ne neither shall ye touch it. To touch, we understand the Hebrew word. It not only meant to take your hand and place it on something, but it meant to lie with a woman. And so by this time, there should be a little paintbrush going on in your head, just painting this picture for you already to show you that this had nothing to do with them eating a piece of produce, whether you say it's an apple, an orange, or whatever, it had nothing to do with a piece of produce. But let's go on further and see and get more understanding. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4 through 6. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for Elohim doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And ye shall be as gods or idols, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And so I highlighted pleasant that we may break down this word and see what it meant in Hebrew. Okay, here we are back at a blue letter Bible.org slide. Here's the word pleasant. It was pleasant. H8378 Ta'ava. And when we click on that, it brings this up desire, lust, greedily pleasant okay desire wish longing of one's heart lust appetite and so the tree it looked pleasant to her eyes she lusted after what she saw what this subtle serpent this beast presented her she lusted after it she desired it she longed for it and so what happened she took of the fruit thereof Let's see what that meant. Here we are. She took H3947. Lacha. Here we see H3947. This Hebrew word could mean take, receive, take away, fetch, all these things that we do with our natural hand. We recognize that this word in this context she took has nothing to do with something that she grabbed hold of physically, where it says she took of the fruit um, because they were able to eat of the fruit, of the produce of the Garden of Eden. They had to physically take it, retrieve it from the tree. OK, so this has nothing to do with her natural hand touching something. So we recognize that the Hebrew word that where they uh, got, she took from also meant marry, okay, to take in marriage, like how Abram took Sarai to wife, okay, he took her in marriage, he married her, they became one, okay, and the natural, we see big old grand wedding ceremonies and everything, that has nothing to do with marriage, it don't matter how long the ceremony is, that man and that woman don't become husband and wife until they consummate their that marriage until they consummate and become one until the man enters into the woman and then they become one and so again she took we have to look at it not in the sense of a physical thing that she grabbed with her hand we already know that's off the table okay so the next definition we look to is married so she married this she and she she entered into the a covenant marriage covenant with this beast 
Okay. And so as we read further on, it says she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. So not only did Eve enter into marriage with this beast, she took of the fruit thereof, okay? When she saw the tree, that it was good for food, she saw that firm branch, that it was good to be consumed, it was pleasant to her eyes, she lusted after it, it was a tree or a branch, okay or something that was firm it was to be desired to make one wise it was going to give her a whole new level of understanding she took of the fruit she married this fruit and did eat thereof and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat so not only was she found in adultery against her husband but now we see adam being found in adultery against his wife and not only in adultery, but we also see other sexual sins, okay? This uh, orgy, because it says, and gave also unto her husband with her. So not only was she encountering this beast, but she, she gave unto her husband, Adam, come join us. Adam, come see something new that I found out. Come see what, what the serpent has showed me. Adam, come and join in. This is pleasant, okay? Adam, come and join in. And what did the word say? And he did eat. Now, some of you hearing my voice may be thinking, oh, this woman that lost her mind, an anointed cherub coming in to a woman, a daughter of Yah, a human, someone formed from the dust of the earth, I included Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, for those of you who think that that is an impossible thing to occur. Not only was it possible, it happened. According to Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of Yah came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. So in other words, we see here that the sons of Yah, these anointed beings, they came in unto the daughters of men. They took the wives of the daughters of men, humans, and they bare children to them. They were fruitful. They took of them wives of the daughters of men, and they were fruitful. They bear children to them. The same became mighty men of old, which were of old, men of renown. So this is proof that the, the divine made it with and impregnated the earthly. Let's move further in Genesis chapter three. We pick up at verse seven, and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons and they heard the voice of yah elohim walking in the garden in the cool of the day and adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of yah elohim amongst the trees of the garden and yah elohim called unto adam and said unto him where art thou so here we see that their eyes were open. Now they have understanding of, they have knowledge of good and evil. Before iniquity was found in them, before they found themselves in this adulterous threesome, before they found themselves out, uh, uh, out of fellowship with Yah, they were innocent. They had innocence. They had one job to do, be fruitful and multiply. Okay, in doing so, take care of the land, take care of this, the earth that Yah gave them dominion over. But when they were found with iniquity, when they sinned against the Almighty Yah, their innocence was lost. And so what did they do? They hid themselves in shame. They were naked the whole time. We never read once that Yah clothed them. Okay, they were naked the whole time, but they had innocence. But when sin entered, it robbed them of their innocence. And so now they found themselves naked and ashamed. 
or as my mom would say, buck naked and ashy. It picks up at Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, he, Yahweh, Yah Elohim, said, who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee thou should, that thou shouldest not eat? Had thou partaken of that thing that I told you to stay away from? Did you touch the thing that I told you not to touch? And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. And Yah Elohim said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. So again, their nakedness was revealed to them because the glory of Yah left them. They were ashamed because the covering of Yah left them and lifted off of them because iniquity was found, because they partook of the thing that was unclean that Yah told them not to do, not to touch of it. And so again, their nakedness was revealed because the glory of Yah left them. So I highlighted beguiled me because I want us to make sure we have an understanding of what that meant because it's deeper than, oh, the serpent tricked me into doing something that I really didn't want to do. So here we are, beguiled me, H5377. H5377, it means to deceive. When you break it down even more and look at the definition down below, to delude, to seduce, okay? So again, this whisperer, this hisser, he came in and seduced her with all his fine jewels, with all the gold and the carbuncle, all the gems that, that clothed his body. He seduced her into, into allowing him to come into her. And then not only that, for her to bring him to her husband, and he seduced Adam. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. And Yah Elohim said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. So here we see, if we can just pause at this verse, we see that he was cursed to the ground. He didn't start out on the ground. He didn't start out on his belly. So again, we got to get rid of that image of this serpent slithering down the tree branch, whispering into Eve for her to eat this beautiful, glistening, uh, red, delicious apple. Not so. We're going to stop that foolishness about an apple, okay? We see here the word clearly telling us that he was cursed to the ground, cursed above every cattle, above every beast, cursed above every animal, every living thing, okay? Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That verse right there is a video all by itself, talking about our King Yahshua coming in and crushing the head of the serpent. So stay tuned for that one. But here in these two verses, we see that the, this uh, curse was pronounced over the serpent, the devil, Hasatan, Satan. Verse 16, we see the curse pronounced over the woman. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception, and sorrow shalt thou bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. So this was a curse pronounced over the woman, Eve, Chawa. They were supposed to be fruitful and multiply, Adam and Eve. 
But now here we see in her multiplying, when she bring forth child, is going to be in sorrow. Any woman who's given birth to a child, who carried a child long enough to give birth, knows that there's pain involved. Bringing a child into the world is pain involved. It hurts, okay? And so that was a curse pronounced over the woman and every woman afterwards. Here in verse 17, we see the curse pronounced over the man, Adam. It reads, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the, unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So here we see the curse being pronounced over the man, Adam, and every man thereafter, because Adam hearkened to the voice of his wife because he didn't follow the instructions that he was given by Yah himself not to touch of it, not to eat of that tree. Then the ground became cursed. Now he had to work, okay, until the sweat of his brow fall. He had to work for what was given to him. He had to now work. And now men today have to work. If a man don't work, he don't eat is what the words say. OK, and we also see the uh, the time stamp beginning. OK, they were supposed to uh, uh, live in harmony, have dominion over everything in Eden until eternity. But once iniquity entered, now the time clock began. OK, so now from the time that we're born, time is ticking. OK, racing against the clock to our death. So we see for dust thou art and unto dust shalt thou return because of, of what Adam and Eve did. Now man was cursed, women were cursed to bring forth child, bring forth fruit in sorrow, in pain. Man was cursed to, to till the ground, to work, okay, till the, the sweat come from his brow because of the sin that happened in the garden. Verse 20, and Adam called his wife's name Eve or Chawa, because she was the mother of all living. Unto Adam also and to his wife did Yah Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them. So Yah had to kill an animal, sacrifice an animal, shed the blood of an animal in order to make a covering for Adam and Eve. That right there is a whole nother video. I'm telling y'all, look for it. Okay, how the blood had to be sacrificed for them because of their sin in order for Elohim to make these coats of skins for them. And Yah Elohim said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, Yah Elohim sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. In other words, now Yah have recognized, he sees, he acknowledges that man now sees. They have knowledge of good and evil because they partook of the evil thing. Now they have knowledge of, of good and evil. Now Yah have to kick them out of the garden lest they put forth their hand and take of the tree of life and live forever. Lest they eat of that fruit and live forever. And so Yah had to kick them out and place cherubims, okay, anointed cherubs, angelic beings at the at the gate of the uh, garden with flame of swords that turned every which away so that they could have no access to the tree of life. 
lest they eat of it and live forever with the knowledge of good and evil. Listeners of this video, please, I hope that you have gained the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of these scriptures so that you can not only stop the foolish talk about an apple, but you can share of what happened in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Chihuahua, or Adam and Eve, did not get kicked out of the garden because they disobeyed Yah Elohim and took a bite of a piece of produce. What happened was they disobeyed Yah Elohim when they both shared in the physical encounter, the sexual encounter with that once anointed cherub, the enchanter, Lucifer, Hasatan, the devil himself. Thank you for watching this video. If you have learned something new, if your eyes were open, if you gained understanding, if Yah poured out wisdom and knowledge unto you as a result of this video, please like and subscribe to this channel, the House of Israel, Yah's Chosen People. Stay tuned for more videos and Shalom.